Thanks to space tourism, we're about to get a lot more data about what happens to the human body in space. Last week, the science journal Nature published a package of 44 papers about aerospace medicine and space biology. Beyond the specific findings of each paper, what was really noteworthy was the fact that they included data from the all-civilian crew of the Inspiration4 in September 2021. My colleague Aria wrote a piece arguing that this release is a sign that we're at the beginning of a renaissance for human spaceflight research, including research about what happens to our bodies in space. Now, I'll admit that when I saw this headline, I immediately flashed back to old science fiction movies where human beings get thrown into the vacuum of space and their eyes bulge out and their bodies explode. It's been 30 years, but I'm still kind of traumatized by what happened to Arnold Schwarzenegger in Total Recall. Anyway, I mentioned all that just to say that that's not what's being studied here, if only because I'm not aware of any scientists who are just hurling human bodies into vacuum to see what happens. Instead, this is more about the day-to-day -day reality of what things like increased radiation and zero gravity might do to us. It's not that we don't have any data about this already. Obviously, astronauts have been going to space for decades, and some of them are staying at the International Space Station for months or years, which is a lot longer than the three-day Inspiration4 mission. But it's worth studying the impact of a much briefer stay in space and to get data from people who aren't professional astronauts. After all, those astronauts tend to be drawn from a pretty narrow band of humanity, usually white and male, and usually scoring in the top percentile physically and cognitively. If someone like me, who's not quite in that top percentile, goes to space, things would probably go a little differently. In fact, the biggest breakthrough here might just be the fact that four private individuals were able to collect all this data about themselves while in flight. Dorit Donneville, who's one of the research paper co-authors and also the executive director of a NASA institute focused on human safety in space, told us that no one was really sure if private individuals would be able to successfully collect all this data. So if you're lucky and or rich enough to become a space tourist in the next decade or so, you might be asked to perform similar research. In fact, Dr. Donneville published an article in Science arguing that you have an obligation to do so. She wrote, quote, the taxpayers paid for all those space capabilities that have now enabled you to go to space, so you owe the taxpayers the research. Oh, and if you are thinking about that trip to space, I should mention that this latest batch of data suggests that these short-term trips do not pose a significant health risk. So that's good. Hi, I will be hosting tomorrow.